Welcome to the step-by-step -step overview of Total War Arena. In this video I will show you how the gameplay behind the battle works. Progression, equipment, currencies and consumables will all be discussed in a step-by-step -step format. Please keep in mind that this is about the closed alpha, so everything in this video is subject to change. So the first thing you do when you load up the game is picking a commander. In this closed alpha you can choose from 6 different commanders. Caesar, Germanicus and Scipio are the Roman ones, Miltiades, Alexander and Leonidas are the Greek commanders. The faction decides which units you will be able to bring to the battlefield. If you play a Greek commander you will be able to bring Greek units like archers and pikemen. Using a Roman commander will give you access to better heavy infantry, gladiators and war dogs. The main difference between these commanders however are their abilities. Each commander has 4 different abilities that can be unlocked. Only one of them is unlocked by default. These abilities are probably the most important thing in this game. Not using your abilities at the right time will cost you the battle every single time again. Every commander has its own specific role in the game. Germanicus for example has abilities focused on direct melee combat. Like a deadly charge, a power to deal 50% more melee damage and good attacking testudos. Caesar has more of a supportive role being able to speed up units and to inspire nearby allies. Alexander has a focus on cavalry which supports them obviously and this is why it's so important to choose the right commander for the units you want to use. If you pick Germanicus you will have to bring melee infantry units to the field. Bringing Caesar is best combined with missiles or artillery. Every commander has a unique profile so you will have to level them up individually as well. In this overview we will use the Greek commander Leonidas, he is able to hold the line which gives a huge defensive and bracing bonus, he is able to do a shield bash which, which does great damage in close combat and he can rally routing allies. I bow before no man. After you pick your, your commander you will have to pick your 3 units you want to bring to the battlefield. You should always try to use units that fit the abilities of your commander. In this case we are using Leonidas so that's why we will have to go for heavy infantry. This is the first time we use this commander so he's only able to bring tier 1 units. For the Greeks these are either militia hoplites or archers. There are 10 tiers in total and we will get into progression to more units later in this video. Please keep an eye on the timestamps in the description as well for that. As our abilities only benefit melee engagements, we will go for 3 militia hoplite units. We will trust our allies for the support of missile units, we will just focus on melee units ourselves. If you click these units you can see that they only have access to the first ability of Leonidas as of now, which is shield bash. You can also see the equipment on the, on the, uh, of the unit on the right. As you don't have any commander XP in the beginning, you won't be able to immediately upgrade your units. In this panel you can also see the stats of your unit, like the statistics, the strengths and weaknesses of the unit, a historical background of the unit and the option to customize your unit. Progression will be discussed later. There's now only one more thing you need to do before you enter your first battle and that is choosing your con consumables. Every unit can have up to two consumables each battle and they are basically one time only upgrades. You can add consumables that increase armor and damage and they will have to be bought again after each battle. In this case we want to improve our armor and defensive powers even more, so I will go for the armor smith and weapon smith on each of our units. At this point you are ready to enter your first battle and ready to have some fun. Who tell the Spartans friend that here by their law we lie? So we have fought the battle and managed to get a good early victory by capturing the enemy base. I managed to get some great engagements with my hoplites, so overall a group battle for Leonidas. After you win or lose a battle you will get this after action report. On the first page you can see the scoreboard of the game telling you the points of all friendlies and enemies. The second tab shows you in depth details about kills, points and more, just general statistics about the battle. The third and last page tells you what you earned by playing the battle in terms of currencies. You will get three types of rewards after each battle. The first one is silver, the second one is commander XP and the third one is unit XP. The better you did in the battle the more silver and XP you will get. The fourth currency in arena is gold but this can only be acquired in limited amounts by paying real money. We will now take a look at what you can do with these resources. Commander XP is the most important one and shared between all your commanders. This means that you can buy things for one commander with XP gained from another commander. Commander XP is used to unlock, unlock things in the game for the first time. 
Commander abilities for example need to be paid with Commander XP. The same goes for unlocking a new unit or unlocking new equipment for a unit. Another thing is unit XP. This can only be used to buy equipment for the unit type that earned it. This means that you can buy uh, unit upgrades like helmets or armor for units with either commander or unit XP. However getting it with unit XP is usually better as that is not shared between all commanders. Silver is the other main currency in the game and this is used to equip things. For example you will need to unlock a new unit with commander XP but to actually use the new unit you will need to put in your army with silver. Same goes with equipment, unlock it with XP but equip it with silver. Silver is also used to buy consumables and new commanders. As said the fourth one is gold and this is what you get when you pay for the game. You can buy various things with gold, one of those things are premium units. Some units require gold to be unlocked. These are not necessarily better units, but they usually bring something different to the faction. An example are Syrian archers for the Romans. The Romans are usually not even able to bring a single archer unit to the game, so this gives you a bit more options. The developers are making sure that these units are not too good. They are really trying to get them just to give more variation and not just more power. Uh, so they don't want to make it a pay to win situation. Gold is also used to buy more things to customize your unit, like more special colors. Last but not least you can convert gold in silver and it is used to convert unit XP into commander XP. Now that we discussed the currencies we are going to take a look at what we can improve for our next battle. The first thing we want to do is trying to get better units, uh, tier 2 units basically. To go to the next tier of units you will need to buy more commander abilities. In the top right corner of the abilities tab you can see dots that are either blue or greyed out. For every upgrade or unlock uh, of a commander ability you will fill a grey dot. Once all the dots are full you will get to the next tier and that gives you access to the better units. In this case we are able to both buy the second ability, hold the line, and also get shield bash to level 2 which directly leads to Leonidas becoming tier 2. Upgrading your current abilities to the next tier will just give them better stats, more power, so the shield bash will even be more deadly when we upgrade it this time. Now that we've leveled our general to tier 2, we should be able to get tier 2 units as well. The only thing we need to do however is buying all necessary equipment on the first unit to get access to the second one. In this case for example, in order to get the light hoplites, we will first need to unlock the better Pilos helmet on our militia hoplite. Now that we've bought this with our unit XP, we are able to buy the tier 2 light hoplite unit. All we need to do now is removing our militia hoplite units and replacing them with light hoplites by buying them with our silver. As you can see all three units are now better tier 2 hoplites. We still have enough commander XP left to buy some upgrades though. We can give them hoplon shields instead of the standard round shields to give them even more missile block, shield armor and shield defense. This is all we will do for equipment for now, all that is left is buying new consumables for the upcoming battle and then you're good to go to fight another one. This is basically everything you need to know about the progression system of Arena. I remind you to the fact that this is closed alpha and that means that everything is subject to change and probably even will change. It does give you a good idea of the path the game is heading in though. If you still have any question about this system be sure to drop them in the comment section down below. There will, will, there will be more videos about Arena like this coming out soon, so hopefully you're looking forward to that. I find it a great game overall and I'm looking forward to see what the team will do with it in the future. You can participate in the closed alpha yourself, to do that be sure to apply, just follow the link in the description. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you all next time, bye bye.